Hello friends, James Corbett here at CorbettReport.com, coming to you as always from the sunny climes of Western Japan. You are tuned into Questions for Corbett, and this week on the D program, I'm going to answer one of those questions that is on the long list of questions that I frequently, frequently receive in various forms, which is something along the lines of, where can we run to to escape this agenda? Uh, looking specifically at some sort of country or some sort of international destination where we can all, I guess, go to to avoid what is coming. Um, well, spoiler, the answer is not going to be satisfying if you're looking for me to name some country for you, because I'm not. <laughs> and the other part of that question would be, well, if I knew of some magical place where we could escape this agenda, wouldn't I be there now? Oh, is that why you moved to Japan, James? No, that is not why I moved to Japan. <laughs> we'll get more into that in a moment, but first let's, let's take a specific example of this question that came in recently from a Corporate Report member in the CorporateReport.com comment section, specifically 8GC58, or even more specifically 8GC58's girlfriend, 8GC59, uh, who writes, Hi, thank you for your great work. We love your channel. We would love it if you made an episode about where the corona-free safe havens are these days. If any such places exist anymore, we are ready to relocate preferably to a tropical, subtropical country. Thank you. All right, thank you for the question. And this is a, a, obviously a much more specific question about corona-free safe zones. Um, I'm going to interpret that to mean free of the COVID hysteria nonsense craziness, great reset insanity that is sweeping the globe right now. Perhaps you mean literally free of corona, or the case-demic, in which case I guess I could recommend you go to New Zealand, but I would not recommend you go to New Zealand because that is the uh, shining example of the type of totalitarian police state that they're going to roll out in the name of stopping the case-demic. Until every single case is squelched out of this country, we're going to lock down and we're going to strictly enforce things. And now look! Oh, now they only have, what, what is it, one case now? So they had just had a rugby game and everybody came, tens of thousands of people in the stands arm to arm, and they can do this because they locked it down to an insane extent that no one else was willing to based on a handful of cases. Yay. So no, I mean, if you're looking to escape the coronavirus, <laughs> move to New Zealand, but don't move to New Zealand. Um, if you're looking to escape the insanity, it's very much a crapshoot and one that is going to change obviously, with what is coming and the second wave, which has been predictively programmed into the population for a long time right now, they are telling us this is going to be the darkest winter. And I have a feeling that the Bill Gates of the world, when they smirk and say people are going to take notice of the next one, might have something up their sleeve. So things are going to change. At the moment, of course, here in Japan, people are out and about in their daily business. And in my part of Japan, at least, literally nothing has changed in my day to day life absolutely nothing. There's no lockdowns, there's there's more people wearing masks on the street, uh, but that's about it. And there's no mask laws, there's no enforced social distancing, there's the word social distancing, but there's no, there's no even attempt at it, let alone enforcement of it over here. So I suppose Japan has kind of escaped the insanity for now, but that's a big for now, because just as I predicted back in uh, March, when I said, oh, they're eventually going to cancel the Olympics, obviously, this year, and when they do, that's when they're going to start worrying about COVID in, in Japan. And lo and behold, the very same day that they cancel the Olympics, they come out and say, oh, Tokyo is developing a hotspot. Uh. So my next bold prediction is if they do hold the 2020 Olympics in 2021, that will be the shining example rollout of the COVID police state that they're going to implement here in Japan as an example for the whole world. And it will come with all of the bells and whistles, with all of the real-time tracking and contact tracing and vaccine certificates and health passports. I, I am sure that will happen when the 2021 Olympics rolls out. So I don't know if I could recommend Japan as a place that's going to be where you should be moving to long-term to try to escape this insanity. Sweden, as people say, has laxer laws than some of its neighboring countries there in Scandinavia and Europe generally, but is that going to remain and in what form and what kind of relative level of freedom from this insanity are you looking for on, uh, over what time frame in order to justify moving halfway around the world, uprooting yourself, going to a new language, a new country, a new culture? Because this is what I keep coming back to when people ask me this question. Uh, as I say, I get it several times a week for the last several years. Uh, I keep coming back to this idea that 
I think some people might have a romantic idea about, uh, you know, it's an adventure, we can move to a new place. Uh, it, I suppose, is an adventure, but adventures can be exceptionally testing things, and I would not take it lightly. Uh, moving halfway around the world to a country you don't know, a language you don't know, a culture you don't know, whatever the case may be, even one that you think is relatively close and, oh, they speak English there or whatever it is, it can still be an exceptionally difficult thing to do. I would not take it lightly. I was young, dumb, carefree, in my early 20s, single, and looking to see more of the world when I came to Japan, and lo and behold, the one in a million chance, it actually happened to be a place I really liked. I settled down, I met people, I, my roots are here now, I am in Japan. I am Japanese? Well, not officially, but anyway, I've been here 16 years, and that is, that can happen, but by no means is that guaranteed to happen, and I've seen many, 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 many people come here for a year, spend their time here, and get back to wherever they are from, or, uh, as I've also seen, people burn out in a few months. They just cannot handle being in a different culture in a different language. Different people react differently, and unless you've done this before, you probably don't know what kind of person you are. So, I would say do not take this lightly, and then my other aspect of my answer to this question, not specifically 8GC58's 8 girlfriend's question, but just generally people who are asking about this in the broader context of evading the New World Order agenda, I would say there is something to the maxim that we have to take a stand at some point, and we have to stand up and at some, in some place, in some time, and why would we not do that to protect our home and our loved ones? Why would we just keep moving to hope hope that we can escape the dragnet for a little bit more time. And hey, maybe you'll buy yourself another few years or decades. Maybe you'll be able to find that magical pocket that I don't believe exists, but hey, maybe it exists where you can escape this agenda for the rest of your life. What about your children's life? What about their children's life? Do you really think that buying yourself some more time is ultimately stopping the agenda? Of course it isn't. Um, so if you are concerned about the future of the human species, I would say that yeah, okay, maybe you, I don't, I, again, I know nothing about you or your personal <laughs> circumstances, so obviously I cannot give you specific uh, information about where to, to move to. But, uh, if, it, uh, I, so depending on what your calculus is, what you're willing to put up with and not, and what you're looking for and what you aren't, and whether you're an old married person with children or whatever it is, whatever your sta status in life is, that will play into your personal decision of whether to move or not to move, but I don't like the idea in general of just moving to try to avoid the New World Order, um, because it is a global rollout, it is going to come, and unless people start sticking up for their homes, then you're basically ceding territory to the enemy. Okay, it's yours. Okay, just don't, just don't bother me over here, you can have my home. That doesn't seem like the type of thing that uh, is going to lead to a winning strategy. Having said all of that, again, I want to stress and underline, not just to agc 58s girlfriend, but literally everyone who writes in about this question, I do not know you. I do not know your specific circumstances. I know nothing about your linguistic abilities, your cultural experience, etc. So I cannot advise you on a personal basis about where to move to or not to move to. And as I say, if I knew the magical place where we would all be free, I would be there myself. I mean, hey, look into Liberland, look into seasteading and those types of ideas. Maybe there's something there, uh, but personally, I'm not there. So that should tell you something. Um, on that note, as always, I invite your partic participation. Uh, I, maybe you do know that magical place where everyone can be free, and uh, I'm going to assume you're there, so you can tell us all about it. Uh, or, at the very least, I'm sure you have your opinions on this subject. Please do log into CorbettReport.com, leave your comment in the comments section, get that uh, thread going so that uh, people like the 8GC 58s of the world and everyone else who's out there looking for some, some answer to this and where we can go to. Uh, let, let's start that conversation and see what people come up with. I'm interested to hear what you say. On that note, that's going to do it for this week. I'm looking forward to talking to you again very shortly. I am James Corbett of CorbettReport.com.